Hi, today we're going to compare a Mesa Boogie 112 Tile cab. Uh, it has been optimized with respect to uh, to size and proportions and volume and so on with the with help of the uh, Tile small parameters. We're going to compare this cab to the uh, my usual go to uh, to cabs that that probably has just received ad hoc Marshall sizes, uh, namely the 1933 112 cabs. I'm going to use the 965 Fender Showman uh, and a Gibson Les Paul R9 to play uh, through these two cabs. And I'm going to actually uh, uh, disassemble the uh, EVM 12L speaker from the Tele cab and put it in my Marshall cab and, and then put it back. So, so everything is constant but the, uh, the speaker box. At the end of the video I'm also going to use the Tele cab uh, to put another guitar in the mix from uh, the other day. But first a few words about uh, how you can use the Tele small parameters to, uh, to optimize the size of a speaker box if you're going to build one. Uh, Tele small comes from the names of the guys who wrote the uh, initial papers, Neville Tele and Richard Small. Uh, if you go to the speaker uh, manufacturer's sites like uh, Electro Voice or uh, MNS, for instance, there are a number of, uh, of uh, parameters that are listed. One is the resonant frequency of the speaker. Uh, for instance, you know, Greenback is 75 hertz or 55 hertz. Another is the quality factor or, or the inverse damping uh, called QTS. Um, which is basically uh, uh, denotes how how easily the uh, uh, speaker, the moving parts of the speaker, rem rem returns to uh, the initial state, and this includes the uh, mechanical and electrical parts of it. You know, you know, the mechanical comes from, you know, it's attached to the spider and and and, and to the surround and and uh, and so on. Then they usually list, list the volume VAS, I think, is denoted. And that's basically the volume. If you think of an imaginary box uh, where, where you have a, a piston of, of, tw of the same diameter as a speaker, 12 inch in this case, and, and uh, this, the volume of this box gives you the same damping as, as, the, uh, as the speaker, as the mechanical and, and, and the electrical uh, damping of the speaker. Now, using these three parameters, you can calculate the, uh, the volume of your speaker box, uh, you you also need to determine how how what kind of pneumatic damping you want from the box because there are three types of damping or inverse damping here. Uh, you have the electrical and, and mechanical from the speaker itself in in free air, and then you have the pneumatic contribution from the uh, speaker. Um, and you can see the uh, equation here how how the uh, volume of your cabinet relates to the, these. Uh, these three uh, uh, dampings or quality factors. Now this is a completely sealed box. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit different from for ported boxes. The, the, the speaker we're going to look at today is, is the ported box, so, so, so it's, uh, it's, it's a bit different there. Now some people think that uh, these kind of calculations is primarily relevant for hi-fi speakers or for bass speakers because, because the, the guitar is kind of over 80 hertz, and this uh, is primarily relevant to lower frequencies. Having established uh, the speaker box volume, uh, when you want with depth and height, you could, for instance, use the, the golden ratio, you know, uh, about 0.6 to 1 to 1.6, I think it is. You know, the, the one that can be found anywhere in nature. Uh, and, and the reason here is, is to reduce standing waves to get a good frequency distribution. Uh, when, when I browse the internet, I, it, uh, I, I can see that there are uh, the, 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 many people claim to get really good results from all sorts of shapes. So, so uh, now let's check it out. Let's go. <laughs>
Thank mm-hmm. you.